Variable initialization in C++ might seem simple, but it can crash your program, wreck performance, or silently introduce bugs. In this video, we are breaking down 12 forms of initialization, and when using the wrong one could cost you. If you've ever initialized a variable in C++, then this one is for you. Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we are diving into a core C++ topic that's often underestimated. Variable initialization. You might be thinking, it's just assigning a value, right? Well, not quite. In modern C++, how you initialize a variable can affect performance, safety, readability, and even whether your code compiles at all. In this video, we'll explore 12 different ways to initialize variables in C++, and break down why each one matters. Let's get started. Copy initialization. This is probably the first form of initialization you've ever used. Here we are creating an int called x and copying the value 10 into it. This syntax has been around since the beginning. But note, in some cases this actually calls a constructor, especially with classes. Here it's calling the std string constructor, which conceptually creates a temporary and then copies it though compilers often optimize this away. Now compare that to direct initialization. Functionally, this may behave the same, but under the hood, direct initialization can sometimes avoid extra copies and can access explicit constructors, which copy initialization cannot. List initialization. Introduced in C++11, this is the syntax. It's safer, because it prevents narrowing conversions. Try this. That's right, unlike with copy initialization, which compiles and silently truncates the value, list initialization stops you. That's a win for safety. Value initialization. What happens in this code snippet? This is called a value initialization. It zero initializes the variable. A becomes zero. This is especially useful when you want to avoid uninitialized values, but don't have a specific one in mind. Default initialization. Now, if you do this, it's the default initialization for a built-in type like int, and it does not initialize B. Its value is in the terminal. But for a class type, this calls the default constructor. So it's a safe operation. The string becomes empty. The key is, built-in types and class types behave differently with default initialization. Aggregate initialization. Consider a struct like this. This is aggregate initialization, where the fields are filled in order using brace syntax. No constructor is called. The fields are initialized directly. It's clean, readable and efficient for simple structs. Designated initializers. C++20 introduced a nice addition to aggregate initialization. It's like named parameters. You don't need to remember the order of fields, very readable. But remember, this only works for aggregates. That is, types with no constructors, no private members, etc. Constant initialization. If you write this or this, they are constant initializations. The values must be known at compile time. These kinds of variables can live in read-only memory and are often optimized away entirely by the compiler. Static initialization. This one applies to global, static or thread local variables. If the initializer is a constant expression, this happens at compile time, before any code runs. That's static initialization. It's deterministic and faster than dynamic initialization. But if the initializer is not a constant expression like this, then it becomes dynamic initialization, which can be costly and subject to the static initialization order fiasco. Dynamic initialization. Let's take this code for example. This happens at runtime, after the program has started. This is called dynamic initialization. 
and if used globally or statically, it can cause subtle bugs depending on the order of things are initialized. It's one of the reasons why the construct on first use idiom exists to delay initialization until needed. Placement new initialization. This is rare but powerful. You can construct objects in raw memory. This uses placement new to construct the object directly in the buffer. Why? For low level optimizations, like custom allocators, embedded systems or memory pools. But be careful, you must manually call the destructor and manage lifetime. Lambda or function based initialization. Sometimes the best way to initialize something is with a little logic. This uses an immediately invoked lambda, and it's great for initializing const or constx per values that need computation but should only be run once. It's also great for thread safety, avoiding the static initialization order problem and encapsulating logic in line. So why does this all matter? Because initialization affects semantics, safety and performance. Let me show you a few scenarios. Uninitialized values. If you forget to initialize, your program could crash or behave unpredictably. Using this guards us against that with zero initialization. Narrowing conversions. The brace syntax helps catch unintended bugs like this. Calling the wrong constructor. With a code like this, which constructor is called? Is it converting into something? Is it ambiguous? Prefer something like this. It's clearer and in some cases it only works if a proper constructor exists, which helps avoid surprises. The performance cost of dynamic initialization. If this happens before main starts and relies on other static variables, you might be in trouble. You can fix this by deferring the init. This way it only runs once when needed and in a safe order. Custom allocators. If you're writing high performance systems code using custom allocators, it can give you total control over memory layout, allocations and cache usage. It's advanced but shows you how powerful and flexible C++ really is. C++ gives you the power to choose the best tool for the job. But that also means understanding the trade-offs of each approach. Initialization isn't just about assigning values. It's about correctness, performance, clarity and ultimately control. Thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, make sure to like, subscribe and hit the bell for more C++ tips. Thanks for watching. Catch, Catch you, you on, on the flippity flip. flip. Catch you guys.